All right, it's Thursday night. Time for Las Vegas Triathlon Club member spotlight. Tonight we got Will Costello. Hi, Will. How's it going? It's going exceptionally. Things oh, are great. great. That's great to hear. This is exciting to have you on. Bob Gamble, how's it going, Bob? I'm doing fine. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Good to good to see you again. Yeah, this is great. Well, Will, thanks for jumping on because uh, this triathlon uh, spotlight is to learn more about you as a uh, triathlete. And so it's really nice that you've jumped on. You've gotten involved with our club this year, which is always special. So welcome to the club again. And Thanks. it's great to have you on. But I'm going to turn it over to Bob Gamble for the official introduction. All right. Thank you, John. And and again, thanks for joining us tonight, Will. Um, appreciate it. Good having you on here. Yeah, thank you for um, having me. First thing I want to do is, and, and just so everybody knows who, who's listening, the purpose of this is so that members get to know members, learn a little bit about them, so it'll help everybody connect a little easier. So um, with that in mind, Will, tell us. Tell us a little bit about yourself, how long sure. you've been in Vegas, um, and uh, get us started. And then we'll get into what you did, how you got into triathlon. Tell us a little, a little bit about yourself. Well, hey, everybody. My name is Will Costello. Um my son's name is Will Costello also, except he goes by Liam. Um, we actually had three generations of Williams in our family. And so my dad was Bill, I'm Will, and my son's Liam. And, you know, hopefully if I come out to any of the events or we see each other, you know, swimming or training, you'll hopefully see my son around too. I'm optimistic that I can inspire him to uh, be an athlete as well through either my um, endeavors of, you know, training at, 3 30 in the morning, right? We all know that feat. If you got to get in a 50 mile bike ride and you can't do it in August in at in the afternoon. But I, I joined uh the club just this last March and I, I came out here to Las Vegas in 2012 from San Diego. And in fact, we'll get into it, Bob, but my first triathlon was in San Diego in Mission Bay. Um way, way, way a long time ago and hadn't done triathlon for a long time. But I took moved a 20, out. 21 week or 21 year um hiatus there you pretty much <laughs> and so i uh i'm a sommelier and if any of you guys know what a sommelier is it's essentially a wine expert although i've passed an exam called the master sommelier exam there's actually a really cool movie after you guys watch this interview you can watch uh on youtube now uh s-o-m-m -M, it's totally free som and it was came back in 2012 actually the same year that i uh moved here covers the what Forbes has described as the most difficult exam in the world. Yeah, I have to be able to blind taste, for example. They put th uh, six wines in front of you, three whites, three reds. They're totally blind. You have no idea what they are, except you can look at them. And you have to smell and orally describe what this wine is. And to get it right, you have to describe not only the grape, but the region, the vintage, the quality level, etc. And to pass the master sommelier exam, you Same. have to get 75% of the available points, and which roughly says that you have to get, you know, five out of six of the wines right. Um, I shouldn't know this because our exams are noticeably or, or have historically been uh, secretive because you never know the actual wine flight that you get. But one of my mentors afterwards he slapped me on the back and said hey i heard you went six for six on the wines so i got all six right which was cool wow um, in fact john I, I i brought a bottle over to your guy's house um when we did the potluck and i think it was the wine because i i brought a specific bottle of norwegian wine because well it wasn't actually norwegian wine it was a wine that the company that i worked for made for norway because i know that you went and did uh the, didn't you do the the norseman yeah, yeah. and yeah. so i brought that bottle over for you guys That's to great. enjoy and i think you drank it the next night so oh yeah no that was yeah. great no thank you for doing that and i didn't know that that you were some oh i can't say it but yeah uh, i didn't know that you were the wine expert that you that you are so that that is really uh that's really neat well, you know, I'm a chameleon, right? Like if I'm in a triathlon group, I'm I'm here to talk about triathlon stuff. <laughs> Nobody needs to know that I'm also the guy who brings the best wine to the party. <laughs> and That's you know, this know, is yeah, what I you're gonna be real popular. Well, this is what I've learned, right? If everybody knows, mm -hmm. oh yeah, Will brought that bottle. That's the one that gets drunk first. And yeah. then I don't get a sip. <laughs> <laughs> um, as I said, I've been out here since 2012 and I live with my wife. And our son, and I already mentioned Liam, but my wife's name is Yvette. Uh, we met in 2014. Honestly, our courtship was mostly around the stove in the kitchen. We uh, cooked and we would look at recipes. And one of the, the stories that we always tell is 
we took all day to make a sandwich. Um, we baked the bread on our own. We made like this apple and brie um, sandwich. We made a caramel drizzle to go over it. And we listened to music <laughs> and we fell in love in the kitchen. And right before I jumped on here, uh, we were making dinner downstairs and we cook usually four days of the week, if not, you know, five, and then kind of use leftovers for the rest of the weekend. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. awesome. And I mean, so other, other than that, I, uh, I very much enjoy being social. I, I like to have a good time. But yeah. Like I said, I've attended some of the potlucks. I like to challenge myself. As I said, one of the masters, the master's only exam has been described as the most difficult exam in the world. And I sort of, as we transition Bob into triathlon, I sort of look at triathlon as a huge challenge, right? No race is the same. No day is the same. Uh, even if I've done, you know, races out at, at Boulder Beach, a bunch with either local or, um, you know, like the BBSC events or otherwise, wow. you could have gotten a bad night's sleep the night before and no race is the same. So um, it is a challenge every time. Interesting what th way to look at it. The fact that no two are, they're like races are like fingerprints. Mm -hmm. weather, weather, temperature, competition, wind, all that stuff. So, so you got into it because of the challenge. But um, tell us how how you how you did get started and what were your first races? So I I did a triathlon because I was a swimmer in high school and I have always had a knack for swimming. It's still to this day I can probably even out of shape get in the pool and swim like a one twenty five one hundred you know free and and I can't do that for like fifteen hundred meters but for hundred I can do it no problem um, and so I've always been a really good swimmer and buddy of mine was like, Hey, there's this super sprint triathlon in mission Bay. Do you want to do this? And it was like, it was like a 500 yard swim, like a 10 mile bike. And then I think like a 5k, like it wasn't a, a lot. It was, I'm like, Hey, I could do this. And I rode a bike that wasn't even mine that I borrowed that had uh toe cages on it. And, you know, it, it was just like, hey, let's go see if I could do this thing. And the whole goal that I had was to try to do it under an hour, because that's what I heard was like, hey, if you can do this race under an hour. And I remember I got like 58, like, you know, 28 or something oh. like that. I can't remember the but I know I came in under an hour and I'm like, that was fun. And then went on with my life and never did another triathlon <laughs> until a couple of years ago. <laughs> So then, so then what was next? Then how, how'd you get back into it? See, that is the million dollar question, right? I had this history where I'm like, I could probably do that again. Uh, COVID happened, right? And we're all stuck in our houses and my wife decided to buy a Peloton and I watched her for three months enjoying her Peloton. And she's like, you should get on this thing. And I go, ah, I don't know, maybe. And then I got on the Peloton and really enjoyed myself hey, through the like classes. Uh, you know, my legs started getting stronger. And then I said, you know, honey, you enjoy the music and the camaraderie and the like scores and everything. I think I want to go outside and uh, ride a bike outside. So I bought my friend's bike, which he way overcharged me for. Patrick, if you're watching this, that was not an $800 bike. Um, <laughs> All but right, we got you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I still enjoyed the bike. It's the one that I did my 70.3 on. I had made it fit me and, you know, I put some aero bars on it and I got outside and started riding with their Sunday group and, you know, started training outside. And I said, Hey, if I can train outside on a real bike, I can also start running. I hate running by the way. Mm -hmm. Um, some people love running and they're great at triathlon. I'm a good swimmer oh. who can bike. Okay. And finishes the run let's put it that way oh i love it well uh, that's neat that you have the swimming background so when you swam in high school what what events were mostly the events you were doing you mentioned 100 yard free and i i was a backstroker mostly oh, um fun. i went to cif finals every uh, of the four years that i swam in high school and i, I grew up in california um oh. i swam in the other events when we would need to you know if i were doing a medley relay i was swimming backstroke because i was the fastest if we were doing a four by 100 i will swim the you know three i would do butterfly if we had to i hated distance i would never want to swim the 500 ever uh, my buddy rico did that so again all of these things if you listen to it like i liked swimming short distances fast yeah. and then i'm like hey let's do a big long triathlon <laughs> oh well, that's all right so you did a race in 2001 you take a 21 year taper yeah, and exactly. Then you come back. <laughs> and what was the race that you did when you came back? 
So Still I had set, okay. yeah, so, I had set my mind on the BBSC Las Vegas triathlon in 2022. It was in September at the end of September. I knew I could start training in sort of the spring and train all the way through the summer and be ready for the fall. And I actually, I, I planned it really poorly because, uh, I used to travel for work and I was over in the UK and I flew back. I think I remember it was on like September 28th that year. Um, I flew back from London the night before or the afternoon before. And so my Jeez. legs were shot and I was dehydrated and all of these things. And I'm like, yeah, let's go wake up at 4.30 in the morning and go do this race. Oh my goodness. And I don't know about you. You guys tell me, do you have like a hundred heart rate all the time right before you start a race? Because my uh, adrenaline is just crazy. <laughs> Yeah, that's part of it you're on a, you're on the starting line it's your friend your 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 adrenaline is like yeah here it comes that yeah that that stress is what we live for right i, I yeah. love it well how did the race go so my goal was one and a half uh one hour and a half and mm -hmm. you know i thought that that would be a good time based upon my training right i could swim the swim in about 12 minutes i could you know do the oh. bike I, I hadn't actually ridden that course before and you know it's quite hilly and I thought I was going to have like nice 17 and a half mile per hour average on my bike. And I ended up at like 13 and the bike totally destroyed me. And then this run, because I never, I hadn't really, I never used to wear a watch. I wasn't paying attention to my pace. I got to the turnaround and this is before they changed the, the transition areas. This is when the transition was up at the um, sort of parking area, not down by the water. So you had that one mile run up to transition two, which was a pain Out of the in the water, ass. Yeah. <laughs> and at least I knew and did my homework ahead of time. I brought a pair of shoes so I could get out of the water and put them on, tie them, feel comfortable running up the hill. Uh, and I got onto the run, hating running, right? And I run down and I'm like, oh, this is great. We're running downhill. And then it turns off to this little side thing. It's very flat. And I'm like, hey, is this the only turnaround? And I ask, you know, one of the volunteers and they say, yeah, just saying go. And I turn around and think, oh, I'm almost done here. And then there's this long uphill again that <laughs> you got to do. And um, I, I, I'd have to look at my numbers uh, from that race. I think I finished in like 145 or something lo oh. longer than I wanted to, oh. but I was really bitten by the bug to go, okay, I want to try to get on a podium. And in a month later, I had decided to do a double distance, right? So Olympic uh, for the pumpkin man. And so I had a month in between where I could just continue to exercise, continue to train and try to do the the pumpkin man. And uh, that and you one, got your taste of hills. So oh you knew, my you... God. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had to walk my bike because I wasn't geared for that long hill up up there and my training wasn't consistent enough for me to handle it so right as you get sort of up to the top there's this kind of like parking area after you go under the road uh and it comes up quite steep and turns up towards the the mm -hmm. park I, I my legs couldn't handle it uh, i didn't you were, understand you were prob probably weren't geared for it i wasn't geared for it first and i didn't understand nutrition at the time which is mm -hmm. the fourth discipline right of triathlon right. and i i didn't have enough carbs in me it was a windy day i remember too so there's like a huge oh, headwind yes, it was. yes it was wind in your face the entire way up yeah there. oh it was awful and i i'm like i have to walk so i walked for probably 25 minutes up this hill because i couldn't ride it and i tried to get back on and my quads were seizing up and i'm like this is not cool um, so finally got up to the top and i'm like oh now it's a 10k that i gotta run it was quite warm because i was slow oh. right and I remember running this, watching all these people coming back and finishing, and it was a ghost town. It was me and like six other people <laughs> running. That was it. And I pulled up dead last pretty much in this race, uh, which was great because it's good motivation. I love this. I love it. You go from one race, which was very difficult with especially that transition, having to do that hill multiple times, hilly bike course. Then you jump out of the frying pan into the fire and do pumpkin man. Yeah. And that is, that is iconic race. That is, and especially the Olympic distance. I mean, it's 
all uphill. It just yeah. uh, that's uh, <laughs> it, it, we we love that race and we love to you know it's a hard race and uh, so congratulations. But now uh, yeah, really finish those two events and you're like you want more. I did, and and that's the point where I said okay, <laughs> it's getting into the fall. I can ride my bike all winter long and feel good about this. And I can not have to wake up at three 30 in the morning and enjoy riding during normal hours. Right. And I said, okay, I'm going to set my mind on a 70.3. I started looking and we wanted to do a vacation spot. I wanted to convince my wife that, you know, me going and doing a race for a day and her sitting by the pool for five days was going to be a good family vacation. Uh, And so I picked Cabo. Cabo's close and sort of built our whole vacation around this. We stayed at a beautiful luxury resort um, called Solas. We got there two days early so I could make sure my bike was good and drop it and go get the bag pickup and everything. Did you drive down there or fly? No, flew. Absolutely. Yeah. It was like an 18 hour drive. Yeah. No, this was, this was a Southwest ticket for sure. (laughs) Um, And yeah, I had planned from that punk man in, I said, okay, I'm going to do a 70.3. And I had planned on a number of races in between, right. Where I would be training not only for speed, but also some personal goals throughout, right? So I did um, a sprint in the spring where my goal was to get on a podium. And Bob, thanks for sharing that uh, photo with with everybody. I had wanted in my age group, this was right when I turned 40 and I wanted to get on the podium at this race. And it was the Rage Triathlon and got on the podium. I saw my name as third and I'm like, yeah, (laughs) super stoked. I got a mug. Yeah. Um, and then I had a number of races, including some Olympic distance, uh, throughout the summer and then, uh, did the 70.3 in the, the fall. Yeah. And that was just what last was, fall. What was, the, what was the 70.3 like coming off of, uh, the shorter races? I had really trained well on nutrition and timing. You know, I used to ride, so I lived down in mountain's edge and I used to leave my house in the morning. I would cross over blue diamond and then head up towards kind of the ridges or not the ridges, um, red rock country club, make my way out to red rocks, ride through red rocks. It was exactly 35 miles to my door. I would switch out for more nutrition and then I would go do another like 35 or 40 miles and was doing 70, 80 most, you know, with like two or three days a week, um, wow. just to make sure I was getting enough mileage. Wow. So huge. when, yeah. And I, the funny thing, this is, I'll have to admit, I picked Cabo because the race was described as flat for the bike and flat for the run. And I said, I don't like hills. Pumpkin yeah. Man ruined like that for me. And <laughs> I, I I was thinking, okay, if I'm training in Las Vegas, I live at 27 and I can go up into Red Rock and it's like 3000 or whatever. I'm going to get a good amount of, you know, uh, vertical and then train well. Mm-hmm. Cabo was quite interesting because training here, it's hot, right? Even at 3.30 in the morning, it's sometimes 85, 90 degrees, right? In August. So I was getting hot weather training all the time, got down there. But the hilliness in Cabo is not described well on their website. Let's just put it this way. Rolling hills, huh? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Very much so. I think they changed it to Uh rolling after because... When I signed up, it said flat, flat. And I said, Uh cool, I like this race. Um, And it was an ocean swim and I, it's protected because it's in the Sea of Cortez and was steaming great. Uh So I did that race and uh, there are quite a few very steep hills and a lot of other rolling throughout the rest Uh of it. And, you know, my nutrition plan worked and the run was 86 degrees. And that for us in Vegas is like no big deal. Yeah, you need a jacket. humid? Yeah. <laughs> well, it was it was humid but not not really so. I mean, the thing about Cabo it's like it's coastal desert much like how, you know, San Diego wow. where I grew up is. So while there is humidity, it's not okay. like not Florida impressive. humidity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, cool. fantastic. Well, you just seem to be, you know, identifying these races with some hills in it. So that that is your your thing. You... <laughs> um, but now of those different distances that you've done from Super Sprint on to 70.3, which one do you tend to gravitate towards now? I would say because of my strength as a swimmer, I like to do a sprint because I'm pretty fast 
Yeah. I can get out of the water ahead of everyone else. And yeah. where people start passing me on the bike and pass me on the run, at least I gave myself a cushion on the swim. So <laughs> as the swims get longer, you know, this is the bummer part about triathlon, right? The distance of swim, no matter what, and the time commitment is so much smaller than the other parts that mm -hmm. I've on Olympic races, even though I've done them, I get out and I'm like 12th or 15th or 20th in my age group. Whereas I'm a, I'm a contender at a sprint. Mm -hmm. I, love, I love it. Well, yeah, we we keep you only for like 15, 20 minutes and we're already there, believe it or not. So I'm curious though, what, what do you have next either this year or in 2025? Oh, that's the, that's the challenge. So we have a, a another child on the way and, mm -hmm. uh, we are, I started a new job in software sales. It's, which with any of you, if you guys work in and around um, grocery stores or specialty retail or restaurants, call me. We've got an amazing software that can act just like an expert like me. But Love it. Besides that, um, I started a new job at a startup that really requires a lot of time and effort, much like startups do. And my training has fallen off. I was telling Bob, I originally wanted to plan for Acapulco December 1st for another 70.3. And now that we have another baby on the way, there's no travel. So mm -hmm. I will not be doing that. I'm going to um, use my member benefit of the Las Vegas Triathlon Club and do some local events. And I probably will do the Las Vegas Triathlon uh, in September, although I'm looking at my like date now and I go, oh my God, that's like six weeks mm, away. Quick. And, <laughs> am I going to be prepared? Because I haven't really trained much this, yeah. this summer. Well, that's okay. But, you know, I mean, triathlon it, it is always here and it's here yeah. for, for when you're ready. And, and uh, this, this is great, Will. I'm really impressed with your journey uh, going from the super sprint and just uh, all these, these hard courses mm -hmm. you're finding. Well, the Norseman, the Norseman is on the list of ones that I would like to try to do. Oh. So, um, you know, the challenge accepted, you know, <laughs> you go. Uh, I do, I do have one more question for you. I know we're running, running late, but, um, in your journey so far, what, what has surprised you or what have you learned? Because you've actually learned quite a bit mm -hmm. in, in a very short period of time. So share some of that with us. What, uh, what can you um give to the people who are just starting out even you know less than you the one thing that i would say is that while the fourth discipline is nutrition and i exercised a lot you can consume more carbs than you need and uh actually put on weight if you're not training the right way and if you're just drinking a bunch of gatorade mixed with you know sugary lemony stuff uh You'd think the triathlon would be good for slimming the waistline, but if you're <laughs> pounding Gatorades with with uh, liquid IV like I was, it might not fall off as quickly. That's what I would say. Yeah. Yeah, that's, a, that's a great lesson, and a, that's a great discovery too. Absolutely, wow. can't go well, thanks, all sugar. Yeah, if thanks for having me, guys. I want to make sure we stick to the the twenty minute timeline. But this was fun. I hope that I get to have this similar conversations with everybody in the club. I plan to be a member for a very, very long time because, you know, when my son is three and a half, I want to be competing with him, you know, when he's 13, 14, 15, whenever he starts. I love it. I love it. It can be a family event. And I love the, you know, racecations, if you will. I think that's such a great way to to do that. And, and the 70.3s are, are good for that type of, uh, of, of fun uh, family vacation. Well, John, I know, I know you did Campeche too. So, you know, that's on my list too. So I, I kind of want to do that one. <laughs> I, I love international travel and uh, racing. So yeah, it's, uh, maybe we'll go do Campeche together. Yep. Awesome. Well, Will, thanks so much and look forward to seeing you at one of the races, whether it's Las Vegas or maybe Pumpkin Man again or, or when, whenever it happens. Or volunteering. <laughs> or volunteering and at, uh, at a potluck again. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody. Right. Thank right, thanks. We'll see you later. Good night.